Hi James! It's nice to hear from you again. <laughs> Just thought we'd say hello to James. We are sitting at Bubbles Hook Dam. Our friends the hippos have abandoned us. They're not here anymore. But we do have some friends in the form of waterbuck. And isn't that a beautiful bull? There's actually quite a few of them, but he's the most impressive out of the lot. He's got his females with him, but he's been drinking for the last couple of minutes now. And they will. They drink every single day. And on a hot day like today, it wouldn't surprise me if they drank twice. But look at the size of those horns. That would be a fantastic meal for the Nkuhuma lions. Look at that beautiful splay, nice and wide. That is an impressive looking bull. So he's right at the peak of his game now. He's looking nice and fit too. Very muscly. So the females would also find him very attractive. And I'm not surprised that he's with so many of them. Now there's some birds alarming. However, and you can see the water buck all staring into the drainage line. You see where their attention is focused? There's also a go-away bird pitched quite high up on the tree, which you can't see, but I'm watching it. It hasn't started alarming just yet. We might turn back and go and have a, a, a quick check in that drainage line. Maybe somebody is moving around here. Because the water bucks seem to be very... In no, well, not that one looking at us. <laughs> She's watching us, all the others listening to the birds. But if the birds are just alarming, it could mean that there's maybe just a raptor that was flying in the sky, perhaps a snake. But they are on high alert. Just checking, making sure. <laughs> Roshni, you said, look at that cute heart-shaped nose. They do indeed have a heart-shaped nose. It's a, quite a unique feature of the waterbuck. That and the white ring around their bottom. I always feel that they must get so hot in our summers because look how shaggy and fluffy their coats are. Not that you'd really want to run your fingers through it with all those sebaceous glands, those oil-secreting glands. Oh, I'm not too sure what they're looking at, but I want to go and investigate. Craig, let's go back the way we came. We can come back to these water back. But I do want to quickly have a look while those birds are still making a bit of noise. There's been so much going on lately up on this sort of northeastern corner. I don't know who could be startling these these animals. Fiona, you've said that he's got a lovely, lovely set of horns. You wouldn't want to mess with him. I wouldn't either. Waterbuck can get quite aggressive, especially when the males fight. Most of the time, like bushbuck and chemsbok, one will, it'll end. Well, one of them will die. It'll end in a fatality. It just shows you how rough they are. Right. So these, there were magpie shrikes and drongos shouting in here. So we'll just look very carefully. So unfortunately, it's a very dense drainage line. Lots of dumboti trees, lots of bush willows, lots of it's good. Normally, like sit down in here. And uh, if you remember this morning, we were driving about and we had Franklin's alarming. And I first thought that there could have been the lions, but then we had the lion tracks crossing out. Here, I didn't see any more tracks crossing in. Let's just go through this little dip one last time. And Craig and I also had, we also had more Franklins just before we got here shouting about. And they were sitting up in the tree. Now typically when a bird flies from the ground down and up into the tree, it means that something's on the ground. They wouldn't necessarily fly and land in an open tree if it was a raptor because they could still get eaten. But anyways, we're going to have a quick look around here. We're going to maybe stop and do a bit of listening. Maybe I'll jump off and take a walk into the drainage line. Scott, however, has found the second cat for this afternoon.